Austin. Uh, today we'll do a new chapter uh, that is photosynthesis. Okay, chapter number six, photosynthesis. This term, photosynthesis, must not be a new term for you all because we are doing this term or this photosynthesis right from our junior classes, like you know, five, six, seven, eight, like that, and uh, we'll do about photosynthesis in detail in this standard okay so photosynthesis is an anabolic process it is an anabolic process why it is an anabolic process what is anabolism okay anabolism okay let me tell you first about metabolism there are two types of metabolisms they are anabolism and catabolism all right anabolism is a constructive type of metabolism whereas catabolism is a destructive type of metabolism since photosynthesis constructs food it comes under anabolism whereas respiration on the other side you know destroys food the food which we eat is destroyed by the process called respiration in order to release energy it comes under catabolism all right so anabolism and catabolism so why it is anabolic process i think you got the point now it is an anabolic process why because photosynthesis prepares the food so it is the process by which green plants manufactures food okay green plants manufacture food using carbon dioxide water with the help of chlorophyll with the help of chlorophyll in presence of sunlight in presence of sunlight okay in presence of sunlight all right so it is a process by which green plants manufacture their own food which means glucose using carbon dioxide water with the help of chlorophyll in presence of sunlight that is what photosynthesis okay since green plants manufacture their own food they are also called producers or autotrophs green plants are also called producers or they are also called autotrophs all right producers are autotrophs okay so this is your photosynthesis all right now photosynthesis directly we will now go into the significance of photosynthesis okay so photosynthesis has mainly two significances as given there in your book also that is food for all and second one is oxygen to breathe in see now significance number one is food for all photosynthesis is the one by which green plants make their own food okay so the food which is prepared by the plants primarily is utilized by themselves but in the meantime there are many organisms there are many organisms who or which directly eat up those plants so via the plants the food prepared by the process called photosynthesis go into them which means the herbivores eat them all up and via the plants the food go to the herbivores okay herbivores means all those plants eating animals all right then from the plants eating animals the food will go to the carnivores carnivores okay carnivores those flesh eating animals that means all the living organisms are directly or indirectly dependent on the plants for the food okay and plants prepare the food by using the process called photosynthesis so photosynthesis is the process by which the food is manufactured for all the living world number one number two oxygen to breathe in so photosynthesis is the process where plants utilize these raw materials as you see carbon dioxide water sunlight like that so after the process as a byproduct your oxygen 
is also released to the atmosphere. Oxygen is also released to the atmosphere, which is needed by all the living creatures for respiration. All right. So these are the main uh, significances of photosynthesis. All right. Okay. Now we'll see the components of photosynthesis. Uh, as you all know, the components of, for photosynthesis uh, are such as chlorophyll, water, carbon dioxide, and sunlight. Out of these four, this topmost one, which is called chlorophyll, is an internal component, which means it is found in the plant itself. And other three are found in the nature. All right. So they are called external components. So now we'll talk about chlorophyll. The vital pigment found in the plant, without which the photosynthesis is not possible. All right. So chlorophyll is a vital green pigment found in a chloroplast, found in a plant cell organelle called chloroplast. So chloroplast, this is a chloroplast. The diagram, which, I, which is already drawn out, it is of chloroplast. And this chloroplast is a uh, is a cell organelle found only in plant cell, which is not found in animal cell. Remember, first let us talk about the structure of this chloroplast. Chloroplast is a double membranous, oval shaped cell organelle found only in a plant cell. All right. It, it has two layers, uh, two membranes, which I have already told you, that is inner membrane and outer membrane. All right. The interior region, okay, the interior region of this chloroplast contains number of thylakoids, you see, thylakoids, okay, that uh, flattened sacs you see here in the diagram. If it is not clear, there on the board, you just see the book also, it is clearly given here. You see the number of flattened sacs kept as if it is kept one over the other. That way it is arranged. So these thylakoids which are flattened sacs are thylakoids which are arranged one over the other. Like a stack of coins. That stack of this thylakoid is now called granum. G-R-A-N-U-M granum. Okay, the plural form of this granum is grana. All right, so this inner wall, the inner wall of this thylakoid contains chlorophyll. That means chlorophyll is present in the wall of this thylakoids. All right, this chloroplast, about 40 to 50, I mean, about 40 to 50 chloroplast are present in each cell. That means in each cell of plant, in the, in the region where it is found, it is not present everywhere, especially it is found in the leaves. Okay, it is mainly found in the leaves and also in the you know, young stem of a plant, it is present there. That means in those regions, in every cell, about 40 to 50 such chloroplasts are present. Okay. Then, as I've shown you, this chlorophyll is present in the wall of this thylakoids. Alright? And chlorophyll is composed of the elements called carbon, carbon, okay, hydrogen, nitrogen, oxygen, and magnesium. What? Magnesium. So, chlorophyll, we find mainly these elements, carbon, hydrogen, nitrogen, oxygen, and magnesium. Okay? Yes, which is found here in the thylakoid itself. Alright. And these thylakoids, you see number of, you know, thylakoids, one of the other, making granum. And this granum, also you see in use number that means number of grana you find in this chloroplast which are interconnected by this fret see here yeah. this interconnecting bars are there which interconnect all those bars all those you know grana and they are called fret 
and this grana are located on the ground fluid substance, colorless ground fluid substance, which is called stroma. What do you call it? Stroma. That means your grana are situated on the colorless ground fluid substance, which are which is called stroma. Okay, this is about your chloroplast. Okay, and uh, this chloroplast is actually is found mainly in the uh, leaves or you see in between the epidermis and uh, upper epidermis and lower epidermis there are palisade and you know spongy layers containing mesophyll cells in those mesophyll cells these chloroplasts are present okay these chloroplasts are present okay then uh, if you see the number of chloroplast uh, in the I mean in the what you call in the leaves how many such chloroplast uh, chloro, I mean chloroplast may be present in the leaves so that can be calculated like this as given there in the book that means in every in every one square one square millimeter of area of leaf surface there are about In every one square millimeter of area of leaf surface, more than five lakhs chloroplasts are present. Okay, chloroplasts are present. Okay, so this many chloroplasts are present there in the leaves. Okay, actually it is found in those regions in the leaves, uh, especially in those. I mean, in between the upper epidermis, lower epidermis. There you see the spongy layer and also the palisade layers where you find the mesophyll tissues which contain or mesophyll cells which contain this chloroplast okay so beside the leaves it is also found on the you know on the young stems of a plant also and also there in the guard cells of stomata okay there in the guard cells of stomata also this your chloroplast are present which contain chlorophyll okay you must be surprised knowing that there are about there are nine different kinds of chlorophylls there are nine different types of chlorophylls among them chlorophyll a and chlorophyll b chlorophyll a and chlorophyll b, chlorophyll b are abundantly present there okay this is all about your chlorophyll which is found in the chloroplast all right too much light destroys chlorophyll uh, we know how important the light is for the activation of chlorophyll and also for the formation of no, new chlorophyll but we should be knowing that the intensity of light is very important okay if the intensity of light is more than the plant needs then it will hamper the plant okay if the light is excess then it will destroy the chlorophyll all right and uh, to understand the importance of light for chlorophyll you can carry out or you can try out a small activity at your home yourself okay go to the garden take a stone and keep some growing plants under the set of that stone for a few days all right now after a few days you observe those plants which are under the set of that stone what you find is that all those plants growing under the set of that stone turning yellowish because of lacking light because of the absence of light under the shade of you know stone all right and due to the lack of light under the shade of stone all the chlorophylls present there in the plants got disintegrated and the new chlorophylls could not be formed there because of lacking light so that important the light is for the 
activation of chlorophyll and also for the formation of new chlorophyll in the plants. Alright, so that important it is. So today we will do only this month and we will continue in the next session. Thank you very much.